Hello again to all and sundry, and welcome back to The Great Partition in Europa Universalis 4. I'm Paragon Saber, and uh, for one, I'd like to apologize for cutting off that last video so abruptly. Uh, I have fed myself, and uh, the blood sugar is coming back up, and things are fine now on that count. Don't worry, I'm not diabetic, just a tad hypoglycemic, and uh, I get rather sleepy and woozy when I've not eaten in a while. So there's that. I will go ahead and start it back up. We'll jump back into the action. It's 1649. We'll see where manufactories spawn in a few months here. I was looking at India, I think, when I cut it off, and uh, we can see uh, that that is still just Madurai sweeping Bahmanis like a storm, uh, with some occupations from Nagaur, some from Jaunpur, and some from Bengal. So, actually, it appears that Bahmanis is fully occupied. I don't know... I guess the war with Madurai and the war with Bengal, Nagaur, Jampur. I think there's one more participant in there somewhere. Who is that? Uh, Malwa. So the coalition war and the war with Madurai are completely separate, so I'm guessing that's what's led to a lack of piecing out and uh, territorial changes there. Meanwhile, uh, still rooting for Kiva. They've done quite well for themselves. Still, I believe, a great power. Yes, they are. Uh, and, I mean, so far have managed to avoid getting killed by Persia and Russia. By the way, Persia actually feeling the heat from the Mamluks. Uh, I believe we saw a Mamlukian purge of Persian heresy, so a holy war there for them. Uh, which also had Oman involved, if only for a little bit. Uh, they were pieced out pretty easily by Persia. Anybody else involved here? Looks like Karaman is, at the very least. Persia also... Uh, just those two. Uh, that could end up pretty close. I think Persia has more troops than those two. They're on Tech 19, Mamluk's on Tech 19, Karaman on Tech 18. So right now I would favor Persia in this, but uh, you never know. Stranger things have happened. So 1650 has rolled around. Let's check and see if we can find where manufactories spawned. Uh, looks like it just didn't spawn in or, uh, 1650. So that has happened. We'll uh, check again. If I remember to check next year, I will. If not, we'll see it eventually. Mazovia and Poland are going at it yet again. I think we saw this last time, but... Uh, if not, this is likely another attempt by Poland. Yep, the Polish, Polish conquest of Podlazier. Yet another war between the Poles and the Mazovians. Usually, of course, they're vassal, and usually gone by about 1460. But they have been the biggest sword in the Poles' sides, aside from perhaps the Prussians, this game. Livonia also involved in that one, on Mazovia's side. So, uh... The alliance that Livonia had with Poland, now gone. Not sure if they picked the right person to support there, but uh, the AI does like to honor its defensive calls, doesn't it? And there's the Bulgarian Separatists. They're just... This campaign can almost just be summed up in the words No Ottomans, No France, Austria Strong, Bulgarian Separatists. Obviously, uh... I mean, Austria is not even the first great power, has never been, but uh, them having all that French territory does make them look quite good, compared to usual Austria, that is. And uh, I suppose you could mention Nitra in there, too. Oh, and AI Prussia, and this has been a fun one. <laughs> Regardless, uh, Bulgarian separatists are have really been a constant in this campaign. I mean, they've enforced their demands on, I think, four different nations. Uh, I can't remember if they've been spat out three or four times at this point, but, uh, I mean, we know that they were spat out from Byzantium earlier. I think they managed to take some territory. Well, that was an odd sound. It sounded somewhat like a culture conversion. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what that was. I will go ahead and check institutions again. That seems to denote that manufactories have spawned somewhere. Doesn't look like that's happened in Europe, though. Oh, where, oh, where have the manufactories spawned? Oh, someone's going for made in Japan. They've spawned in Kyoto. Nicely done, Japan. 
still, I believe, ruled by the Ashikaga. Yep. And a very capable Ashikaga at that. So yes, uh, we'll see if Japan can't uh, embrace that before 1550, er, uh, 1655. Who knows? All of Jin's newly gotten territory being now lost and well, not lost, but uh, threatened by noble rebels. Yan noble rebels at that. Poor Emperor Yan. We've just had a tough time of it. Did hear that the Emperor of the Holy Roman Emperor Empire is dead. Long live the Emperor. And it's Austria again. What a surprise there. <laughs> just so difficult to make them relinquish the Emperorship once they've got it. And they start with it, so... The Bulgarian separatists have now moved on to Germian, sieging down Idirn, which, though not a Bulgarian core, might be needed for them to move around. I can't remember if... Uh, I, I think forts do stop rebel movement, so uh, probably better for them to go after that than to go straight on to Philibay and Burgas, assuming they wouldn't get zone of control out of it. Nice little name for uh, Macedonia there, under Serbia. Macedonia, that's uh, it's very nice. Good little flavor touch there. I mean, Paradox has done so much of that. You know, so many provinces in this game have uh, names for the different cultures. I think, you know, I think they've made Czech names for a lot of European provinces for uh, for when Blobhemia goes out of control. So it's just uh, just fun and interesting to see. Looks like Germion has gone for the engagement against the Separatists, who's going to come out on top. Looks like Germion will. Though uh, the Separatists cur certainly made it a close run, and they did siege down Adirn before that battle commenced, or perhaps it was won. Sometimes the ticks on those when engagements happen right around the same time as siege ticks, those can get a little wonky. Regardless, uh, this round of Bulgarian Separatists has been defeated, but I'm sure we'll see them again. Uh, looks like this war between Persia and the Mamluks is over, and it appears that the Mamluks have taken Araka. Oh, sorry! That's Egypt. The Mamluks have formed Egypt. They must have gotten, uh, I think they need Admin Tech 20 for that. So yes, Egypt has been formed by the Mamluks. They've, uh, been able to do that since the Ottomans haven't been around to wreck their dreams. Uh, well, alright. So given that there's still a bunch of cores there. I'm gonna guess that actually no territory changed hands in that war, uh, and they signed a white peace. You can always check truce timers for that. Oh, not this again. It's been... I've seen that happen too many times, where the, uh... the things just refuse to pop up. I'll keep going with this video, but then I'll restart EU4 afterward. Uh, regardless, truce until July 50... or 1656. I'm going to guess that that means that they did sign a white piece. Oh, I hate it when the pop-ups do that. Apologies there. I'm not sure what's happening with my EU4, but uh, also it looks like Bahmanis has been pieced out by all of its enemies. I think Madurai got some territorial games down here. Um, Can't be sure about both Bahmanis and Madurai have cores on about all of those border provinces. Uh, but Bahmanis does look a little bit smaller than they were before. Uh, Nagaur, however, has drawn the Wrath of Delhi. No fun for them. Uh, they do have Malwa defending them, but Delhi can pull together. I mean, I see 40k right there. They're not small. They could uh, Their force limit's probably even larger. I'll go ahead and check the ledger. Why not? I mean, Russia has more than all the rebels in the world right now, so there's that. Yeah, Delhi has a force limit of 71,000. Uh, they probably can't... They certainly can't afford that right now, but... When the chips are down, they could definitely throw a decent-sized army at people. Uh, Japan's still up there with the same 59,000 we saw earlier. And uh, Persia are kind of reeling. They've only got 54 for now. Uh, also notable, Great Britain with... 61,000 men right now, but only 70 manpower. 
I'll go check out that war in a second. Whereas Austria's got 82,000, Spain's got 81,000, and, well, Russia. <laughs> Oops, I'm not looking at Spain, I'm looking at Great Britain. <sighs> Wish I could get this to work. Alright, well, they are fighting Muisca, so that's down in South America, and uh, that is the only people they're fighting. Also, hello to Edward VI, and we also have Alfred Lancaster. Also have Lancasters in Croatia. That's interesting. So, uh, British Columbia hoping to grow larger with the help of their overlords. Uh, they're also sieging down the Portuguese province of Cartagena. Actually, that would, uh, that would be Muisca who sieged that down. The Brits are not at war with that. Regardless, we're likely to see a bunch of this land going to British Columbia. So, rough day for Muisca. Surprisingly enough, the Aztecs and Mayas and uh, Nahuatls and, again, Mayans, have been untouched by the Europeans, and so Shu has continued to get a little bit stronger. They've annexed, I think, a couple provinces from... I don't know if Zapotec had these when we last saw them, or Quiche, or... Regardless, Quiche has definitely shrunk yet again, and uh, Zapotec has kind of migrated west, though they still have their named province. They also have a couple vassals. God, I wish I... I hate this UI bug. Sorry, uh, Totonac has vassalized Zapotec. So the flower wars continue, and people are made vassals, and released, and doom and such. Though notably, the Aztecs are have been reduced to only to Nochtitlan itself, uh, and they are themselves also a vassal of Totonac. Totonac has three vassals, Aztec, Zapotec, and Tlaxcla. All of them hate him. <laughs> they, uh, they left to go for the vassalages down there, those silly guys. And we have separatists, Floridian separatists, for the 13 colonies. <laughs> uh, looks like a colonial war was fought over here between the colonies of Toulouse and Great Britain, and Toulouse came out on the losing end there. Wouldn't call that all that much of a surprise. Toulouse, uh, you know, they're, they're alive. They've been alive for a while, but they're not nearly, they're not a great power by any means. So the war between Gascony and uh, the one where Gascony was attempting to defend Milan is over. Uh, I don't think any territory was lost for Gascony. Uh, I seem to recall Orléans being under Austria, and we'd see a Gascon core there. So, yep, Gascony uh, didn't lose anything territory-wise. I hate that bug. They're allied with Serbia, Odiev, Milan, and the Pope, so they didn't even lose that alliance. Uh, and that also means that Milan is still free. How in the world did Siena manage to not eat that. Also, ah, Milan is rival to Sardinia. Guess they are about the only powers of uh, similar size in that region. Or rather, Sardinia is the only thing that's even close to where Milan is right now. Well done by Siena. I think I've mentioned that before, but uh, they did quite well. Nitra appears to have uh, taken a few provinces from well, I know they took Lika from Venice, but I'm not sure who Zagreb and Donjikraji belonged to recently if that wasn't Nitra. Can we check cores? I only see Croatian and Nitran cores on that, so maybe uh, Croatia or, or Nitra just had those and I didn't notice and have now taken Lika, and that made me notice. Regardless. Oh, Venice. How far you've fallen, my friend. So Venice's capital in Thessaly. That's odd. Uh, now under siege by Epirus, who's looking to expand yet again. Unf oh, Byzantium's dead again. Maria has managed to assert control over the entire peninsula. Somehow they managed to get uh, 9k troops, or... Well, yeah. And we're able to siege down their named province of Maria, and uh, Byzantium's gone again. 
But, you know, again, 1650s, uh, rather a historical time for Byzantium, or really any of these fellows to be around, so... Again, there is that. Looks like Serbia's fighting Crete? Crete must be defending Venice or something. <sighs> yes, that would be the Eprot Purge of Achaean heresy. Okay, then. They are at war with Epirus and Crete. Hmm. So it's Epirus, Crete versus Venice, Achaea, Serbia. How could they have thought this was a good idea? Epirus is not strong enough to do this on their own. Maybe they have a less than able ruler. They have a naive enthusiast who underestimates AE and prefers to pick on someone their own size. Well, it seems that they forgot to consider that while uh, Achaea is in fact their own size, their allies uh, rather uneven uh, make that an uneven trade. Though, I mean... Epirus' army is up here, uh, kind of messing with Serbia, who is engaging. And Epirus wins that battle. So, we'll see. I, I still think Epirus and Crete are going to lose this. But uh, definitely adding a little bit of flavor over here. thought I saw Germion maybe at war, but uh, I think I'm mistaken. Their ships were just patrolling. Who are they allied to? Denmark? Wow. Aiden and Karaman. find it interesting how the European nations seem to just zero in on the Balkans as, as places to get allies uh, when the Ottomans aren't there. I mean... And, and sometimes even when the Ottomans are there. I've seen the Ottomans allied to Denmark. I've seen them ally Poland. Think I've seen them ally so many different HRE miners. Uh, <laughs> I guess there's just something about the city of the world's desire that uh, draws alliances to people or something. Looks like Persia and Russia are at it again. Decent sized battle up there in Simbirsk. Russia the victor in that one. They have tech 20 to Persia's tech 20. So on even footing where that is concerned, what about ideas? Of course, Russia's national ideas pretty much give them free quantity. But they've taken offensive and are actually taking quantity on top of that. Talk about overkill. Uh, and they also get the yearly army tradition from the table of ranks idea. But other than that, they're, uh, the Russian national ideas are basically quantity. So they do have offensive on their side. Give some better generals, as we can see this... Uh, 335 down here, certainly not bad. That's 11 pips. I mean, I guess out of 24, but siege pips being so much rarer than the rest. As for Persia, they are four ideas behind, notably, but they've also taken offensive. And so, but they, they also have the Cav combat ability from, uh, and morale of armies from their uh, traditions, as well as some discipline. And uh, that's about it for direct combat. And it looks like the war's been over while I've been talking. The war has ended while I've been talking. Uh, I believe Persia has... Russia has taken Dagestan, and perhaps not anything else? Though Persia does now have its sights on the southern Caspian, including the important trade center of Mazandaran, which also produces silk. Great trade province. Definitely a province I try to take uh, in a lot of my runs that end up in this area of the world. Persia dealing with quite a few separatists. We saw that 17 stack down there, probably Iraqi. And then there are 35k Afghan separatists over here, and Delhi continues to grow. Wonder if they might find themselves a great power eventually, but they appear to have taken quite a bit of land off of Nagaur. And Bahmanis is dealing with all of the noble rebels. That looks, at first glance, to be about 100,000. Poor guys. I will actually glance at the great powers. 
Uh, Poland has gotten himself back up there, and they've actually crushed Mazovia in that war. That's a surprise in one manner or another. Uh, regardless, Russia's still on top. Spain in second, as usual. Great Britain has made it uh, has made it up to third. They have 876 development now. Well done. Persia in fourth, just barely behind Great Britain. Austria still in fifth. Poland now in sixth. I'll see what uh, exactly their territorial gains were in a second. Egypt in seventh, and Morocco in eighth. So uh, Poland has jumped up and I believe taken the place of Kiva, but uh, who perhaps has lost land? I'm not sure. Regardless, uh, let's see what all Poland took. Well, for one, Mazovia is gone. Just, just gone. Uh, that's quite a... Wow, I'm not sure how that was all lost. Maybe they f were inherited by Prussia after the war ended. Uh, that would be my guess as of now, but uh, Poland not only took their usual capital and now capital of Warsaw, but I believe they also, I mean, they had to link up their lands to Tuchula, so they took Nitze, Newmark, Chomno, Vizna, Podlazier. Uh, I think that accounts for the territorial gains for Poland, uh, at Bels as well. But uh, Premisil now back under Nitra, as are Halix, Luo, and Podolia. So we do see Mazovia still with a claim on this. You know what? Let's let's find him. Mazovia. Mazovia has Gotland. How in the world did all of this end up under Prussia? Mazovia's erstwhile or perhaps still, an ally. They were only allied to Finland right now, so perhaps that alliance simply broke and Prussia pounced while we weren't looking? I That is, however, a bunch of the core Prussian lands. Uh, I think that's everything aside from these three. Uh, that is now under Prussian control, so... Good for them. <laughs> Russia is also fighting Norway-Denmark. What might that war may be? That'd be the Lubeckian conquest of Lund. So, Lubeck uh, calling in some heavy hitters trying to take some land from Denmark. Lund, uh, I mean, a good province where trade is concerned in the Lubeck node. Or at least, uh, I thought they had the Skan market here. Perhaps not. Uh, is there something in, like, yeah, Sjelland uh, does have the sound toll here, the Orison sound toll. 20 trade power, pretty good. Any other good things that uh, Lubick could take here? They already have Hamburg, they of course have Lubick itself. Interesting how Oslo is in the Lubick trade node, I didn't know it extended that far up that way. But, uh, honestly, Sjelland would probably be the, uh, the best province for Lubick to get here. And they are using Russia like a battering ram. Or perhaps a baseball bat. Uh, Denmark is getting crushed here. No surprise, given that Russia has the largest army in the world by at least a factor of two. And, yep, figured that uh, this alliance between Catalonia and Spain could not last long, while Catalonia had this errant province, Valencia no less, on the Iberian mainland, and now Catalonia is full occupied. Though they were able to uh, at least occupy the fort in Urgell for their pains. Still, uh, that should see Spain at the very least taking Valencia. They might full annex Catalonia, who has been around far longer than uh, they really had any right to, in my opinion. They've just been hanging out on the Baleares and got lucky with uh, some generosity from the League War. While I was not looking yet again, uh, Egypt made some more inroads into Ethiopia, taking down even to Axum. Oh, that's not good. That means the Copts are left with zero blessings. <laughs> they, are, they don't have Will of the Martyr Martyrs for that extra 2.5% discipline. They don't have any... Uh, Legitimacy gain, they get no extra conversion. It's uh, it, it's quite sad. But uh, so it goes, and 
looks like Egypt might be able to do some decent expansion down into here. Cephala does not appear to have lost much of anything since that uh, war against Kilwa, though I'm guessing they'll come knocking again. Spain still has not colonized that province. Emperor Yan is still the emperor, as evidenced by the zero mandate. That's probably harsh of me. But they are fighting Kalka, as well as perhaps formerly Korea. They are fighting Kalka in the Kalka Yan War for the Mandate of Heaven. We could have Emperor Kalka. How much sense does that make? None at all, but hey. That's something you would never see in Usually U4. You would just have Ming and Ming and more Ming and more Mandate than they have any clue what to do with. So I suppose we should be thankful. Oh, Sweden. Sweden's gone. Sweden has been, uh, I believe, peacefully vassalized and integrated by Russia. They survived so long up there in Jokmok, but alas for them. And this war is over. Denmark has lost Schleswig, Lolland, and Lund to Lubeck. Rather disjointed provinces. I mean, Lubeck has a navy, of course. Uh, but, well, since the Skan market has apparently expired here, uh, I don't think Lubeck gets all that much out of this. And there's Poland's army, sieging down some Lubeckian clay. What's got them up in arms? That'd be the Russian purge of Polish heirs, so lordy. Talk about your big war. Look at all of those Russians rushing into Poland. That was awful. I apologize. Uh, regardless, looks like Poland might be losing. I mean, Lithuania had already lost a ton to uh, all to the partition from the beginning. Russia was able to eat up things like Smolensk, Polotsk, uh, this land. And now they're just going for even more. Ah, that's, uh, that's a rough one. Russia is definitely uh, the number one world power for a reason. Uh, again, they have almost twice the army of the, the next biggest power. Uh, that being Austria. That's just, you know. I, I think they could just overwhelm anybody in the world with numbers right now. But that makes sense. I mean, they are really the major nation, aside from Castile, that loses some of the least at the beginning of the game. And it still took Muscovy quite a while to consolidate and form Russia, because uh, Novgorod grows stronger in comparison. But, I mean, really, Russia, Muscovy, you know, they were forced to spit out Nizhny Novgorod, and they did lose that to Kazan for a while. But uh, And they also had to spit out Kasim. But that's all they really lost, as far as uh, you know, as far as releasable nations were concerned, as far as their own clay was concerned. Uh, they did have to release all their vassals, uh, and you know, Peskov did all right for itself. But Russia just joined up with Perm again through an alliance, and uh, <laughs> fought a union war with Novgorod over Yaroslavl to consolidate all that. And you know, again, it took them a while and. I mean, Novgorod is alive, and Rodan Yemi and uh, Kainu enjoying a guarantee from from Finland. <laughs> uh, regardless, uh, I mean, Russia strong. All belongs to Mother Russia. And I apologize if I have any uh, Russian viewers who are now annoyed with me because of that. So Epirus did take Thessaly from Venice now. So Venice has Dalmatia and only Dalmatia. Posnia trying their best to take that, but, uh, well, you need nine men. You, you always need nine men. Naples is gone. Sicily has most of their land, but the Pope did manage to take a bruisey. And there are a lot of Swiss down here in Syracuse. There uh, seem to be Neutral, or peacefully, or perhaps neutrally, coexisting with the Sicilians down there. Are they allied? No, they're allied with Odiev Milan. 
and they give the Swiss military access. Well, interesting. Regardless, I stopped the timer by one second. I will try to fix that with the, uh, the stuff on the UI not popping up. This has been The Great Partition, and I've been Paragon Saber. Thank you for watching.